Amen. Bishop Alfred, we are honored to come and share the word of the Lord together with us, with the interpreter, uh, our brother Gitonga. Let's celebrate the Lord as they come. Thank you. I welcome all of us who may have our seats. Thank you for allowing us to come in the comfort of your sitting room. Thank you for allowing us to come to you through your phone. And we are excited that as All Nations Gospel Church, we can be a voice in your life today. We want to thank God for this morning where we can share God's word. A lot of things are happening. But as a minister of the gospel, I want to encourage you that as you hear the news, as you read your newspaper, put double effort in the word. Hear what the Lord is saying. The Bible is God's voice for all generations. It, what it says yesterday is still relevant today. Unlike the newspaper of the news that we hear. I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of Matthew. I want to read two passages of scripture this morning. Matthew 24. You will allow me to read in English from verse 3 through to 14. Then again we'll read 2 Timothy Timothy 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse, verse 1 through to 9. So I'm waiting for Matthew 24, from verse 3 through to 14. The Bible says, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, and they say, tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. For you will hear of wars and rumors of war, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to, to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from their faith, and they will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. The last verse that I want us to read from that passage, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. Second Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul again talking on the same lines. From verse 1 through to 9 he says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. 
People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, consighted, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. And the last verse, they are the kind who warm their, who warm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. And he continues, but allow us to stop there Tutasi, as we pray. Tunaomba. Mighty Father, we thank you Baba mkutu na that we can share your word this morning. Thank you that the entrance of your word brings forth light. We've heard many things this week. But what an honor to hear your word at this minute. May your anointing be upon us. And to our hearers, give them understanding. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A lot of things are happening in the world today. And as I come to you through God's word this morning, I want to share a sermon that I've titled The Days That We Are Living In. The Days That We Are Living In. We cannot bury our heads in the sun. Sun, in the sand. And be ignorant of the days that we are living in. If you look at our world today, we are living in days where tragic things are happening suddenly and unexpectedly. When you look at today, sasa, it is hard to predict what tomorrow will bring. As we sit in our homes, yetu, we don't know what tomorrow holds for us. Kile kilicho, kilicho kukio, kule kesho. But ladies and gentlemen, wake kwa waume. the events of the days Matukio ya siku are simply an indicator hiyo tu ni inaashiria that a great spiritual happening is about to take place. Ya kwamba kuna kitu kikuu cha kiroho kilicho karibu kufanyika. As we live in these times, tunapoishi katika nyakati hizi, these are days to watch the news with a Bible in your hand. Hii ni siku ambazo unafaa kuona habari ukiwa na Biblia mkononi. These are days to read the newspaper with the Bible open. Hii ni siku za kuzoma gazeti ukiwa umefungua Biblia pia. As Jesus clearly said, these are the last days. Apostle James had to say this about these days. In James chapter 4 verse 13 through to 14. James says, Come now. Johnny Sasa, you who say wale abo munasema, to mo, today or tomorrow leo ama kesho, we will go to such and such a city. We will spend that near there we will buy and sell or we will make profit. Pale mwaka, na kuza, faida. Look at what he says in verse 14. Tazama wa Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Hata hivyo, kesho. James lived many years before us. But his statement is relevant for us today. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. And look at the, the events that are happening around the world. They correspond with what James is saying. For what is your life? It is even as a vapor. That it appears for a little time. Then vanishes away. Death has never been close to humanity 
as this time kifo hakijawahi kuwa karibu kwa mwanadamu kama ilivyo kwa wakati huu you can run to the east unaweza kibia mashariki you can lock the door unaweza ufunga mlango you can take a ride in the car unaweza safiria kwa gari you can take a hike in the plane unaweza panda ndege wherever you are mahali popote ulipo life is simply like a vapor maisha ni kama mvuke death is so close kifo kiko karibu sana no matter what we do This is the reality of the days we are living in. And Jesus speaking about these days. Na Yesu akizungumzia siku hizi. Stated in Matthew 24 and verse 3 where we've read this morning. Akanakiri katika Matthew 24 kuanzia mlango mstari wa 3 mahali ambako tumesoma asubuhi ya leo. Because his disciples were worried. Kwa sababu wanafunzi wake walikuwa wameshtuka. They wanted to understand the future. Walitaka kuelewa maisha ya kesho. So as he sat with them on Mount Olives. Kwa hivyo alipokana katika mlima mizeituni they came asking him wakaja kumuuliza tell us hebu tuambie when will these things be mambo haya yatakuwa lini and again they asked na tena wakauliza what will be the signs ishara itakuwa ni ipi of your coming and of the end of age ya kuja kwako ama ya siku za mwisho they were asking two very important questions walikuwa nauliza maswali mawili ambayo ni muhimu sana when will these things be mambo haya yatakuwa lini and when i look at the news na ninapotazama habari when i look at the world events ninapotazama matukio ya ulimwengu i don't need to answer this question sifai kujibu haya maswali when will these things be wakati haya mambo yatakapokuwa again they ask the second question na wanauliza swali la pili what will be the sign of your coming ishara ya kuja kwako itakuwa ni ipi what will be the sign of the end of age na ishara ya siku za mwisho itakuwa ni gani again when i look at what is happening in our world today na hata hivyo nikitazama matukio ya ulimwengu wa sasa i don't need to answer the question sitaki kujibu swali but i'm here to tell you this morning lakini kwamba nikwambia asubuhi ya leo the church kanisa must be aware lazima likuwe lijue of two great spiritual events ya matukio mawili makuu ya kiroho and number one ya kwanza is the coming of the lord at rapture ni akuja kwa yesu at rapture katika wakati wa kunyakuliwa in first thessalonians 4 and verse 13 continuing ofa wa thessaloniki wa kwanza 4 na 13 kuendelea the bible clearly states biblia inanakiri wazi these will come fast haya mambo ndio yatakayotangulia and christ will meet the saints in the air na yesu kristo atakutana na wao ma waminio waminio mawinguni and take them back to heaven with him na awapeleke mbinguni pamoja naye he will present them before the father's throne na atawapeleka mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha baba where will they will remain until the time of the great tribulation on earth mahali watakapokaa mpaka mateso ya ulimwengu yatakapokuisha the church of jesus christ kanisa la yesu kristo needs to be aware lazima lijue that these events happening ya kwamba matukio yanayofanyika are preparing the, the church ni kuliada kanisa is preparing the saints ni kuwaada watakatifu for this great spiritual event kwa sababu ya tukio hili kuu la kiroho the second event that the church must be aware of tukio la pili ambalo kanisa lazima lilijue is the second coming ni kuja kwa mara ya pili this is when christ shall come on earth hapa ndipo wakati yesu atatoka atakuja duniani to live and reign kuishi na kutawala for a thousand years kwa miaka 1000 revelations 1 and 7 says ufunuo moja saba inasema that at this coming ya kwamba kuja kwake every eye shall see him kila jicho litamuona even of those that pierced him na kwa wale hata walio mduga mikuki we need to be aware of the days that we are living in lazima tuwe na uhakika wa siku tunazoishi ndani yake and when we look around na tunapotazama kando these events matukio haya are preparing ni kuandaa the world ulimwengu the church kanisa for these two great events kwa haya matukio mawili makubwa and there are things that jesus spoke of na kunayo mambo yesu aliyoyazungumzia i may not going to detail on each one of them na ninaweza kosa kuingia katika undani wa mambo hayo but let me touch on them that are clear in our times lakini wacha niaguzie yaliyo wazi kwa nyakati zetu as i ask the question na ninapoliuliza swali what are the events in the world ni matukio gani katika ulimwengu that are preparing yanayoandaa the ground for his coming ulimwengu kwa kurudi kwake either, either at rapture 
Either katika kunyakuliwa or at his second coming. Ama katika kuja kwake kwa mara ya pili. Because theologians may debate about this. Ni kwa sababu haya mambo ndio tunaojadiliana nayo. But the events are clear. Lakini matukio ni wazi. Jesus speaking in Matthew 27 verse 7. Yesu akizungumza katika Mathayo 27 mstari wa 7. When we look at our world today. Tunapotazama ulimwengu wa sasa. Jesus said. Yesu akasema. Nation will rise against nation. Taifa litainuka juu ya taifa lingine. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. Ufalme utainukia ufalme mwingine. Ladies and gentlemen. Wake kwa waume. We are living in a time where there are many wars. They come to our ears. Before it is over, another one comes. Many wars are happening in our world today. Nations are at war. Kingdoms are at war. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that since 1914 over 100 million people have died in wars. Over 100 million people that, are, that have died in wars. So death of the masses the yeah. masters have been dying. Watu wamekuwa wakifa kwa wingi kwa halaiki. In wars. Katika vita. As we talk in this year 2020. Na tunapobua katika mwaka huu wa elfu mili shirini. We need to know that their countries are at war. La lizima tujua kwa baku nazo unchi zinazo pigana. US, USA and Russia. Uh, Marekani na urusi. Lead the list of nations. Inaongosa katika ma... Uh, uh, that are involved in conflicts whether directly or indirectly in some nations of the world. Do you know in 2020 the civil war in Iraq that began in 2003 is still on? People are still dying. In the year 2011 war broke out in the nation of Syria. People are still dying in Syria today. In the year 2015, war broke out in the nation of Yemen. People are still dying as we talk today. In the year 2009, the Boko Haram revolution began in Nigeria. Nigeria. Today, people are still dying out of the invasions of Boko Haram. In 1991, war broke out in Somalia. This war is older than most people today. There is still war in Somalia. In 2013, war broke out in South Sudan. Kukawana vita Sudan ya kusini. They've tried to resolve it last month. Wakajaribu kuisulisha mwezi ulio pita. Let's see how long it will hold. Wacha tuona itaendelea mpaka lini. Ukraine. Kule Ukraine. They are, they are fighting with Russia over the issue of gas and oil. Wamekua kipigana na urusi kwa matumizi ya gas na mafuta. Since 2020-2014. Tangu mwaka alifumbili kuminani. Wars are happening in our world today. Vita vinafanyika katika ulimwengu wa watu wa sasa. Jesus said nation will rise against nation. Yesu akasema taifa litainukia taifa. Kingdom against kingdom. Falme itainukia taifa falme. Watson Institute, what Watson Institute, chuo cha institute cha Watson. In their column of the current wars, katika kifungu chao kwa vita vya sasa, they try to look at the cost. Wamejaribu kutafuta chanzo. The cost. Wameja gharama of these wars to date in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, and Pakistan. Iran, Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, and Pakistan. And as they were trying to quantify the loss in these wars, they believe 800,000 people have been killed. You need to ask yourself, is this a small number? Let me bring you closer home. One notable war is the Rwanda genocide. 
ni wa vita vya wanyarwanda vya kikabila that happened in 1994 iliyofanyika mwaka wa 94 in a span of 100 days kwa siku 100 800,000 to 1 million people were killed. Zaidi ya watu 1800 na karibu milioni moja walikuwa wameuawa. And in retaliation, na katika kulipisha kizazi, another 100 or so Hutus were killed. Na zaidi ya watu 1100 wa Hutu wakauawa. This is a war. Hizi ni vita. That in a hundred days took 1 million people. Ya kwamba siku kwa mwezi mmoja kwa kwa siku 100 watu milioni moja walikuwa wameuawa. Jesus spoke nations will rise against nations. Yesu akasema taifa litainuka jua taifa lingine. Kingdom against kingdom. Falme jua ata falme nyingine. Secondly in Matthew 24 and verse 7. Katika Mathayo 28 na mstari wa 7. Jesus spoke of famine. Yesu akazungumzia juu ya njanga la njaa. And I will call number 2. Na nitaita hii sehemu ya pili food shortage in the world ukosefu wa chakula duniani because that is a language that we can understand kwa sababu hiyo ndio lugha tunayoielewa Jesus as he spoke to his disciples there and then Yesu akizungumza na wanafunzi wake pale pale he saw our time akaona nyakati zetu and he said in our time na akasema nyakati zetu there will be famine kutakuwa na njaa there will be food short, food shortage in the world kutakuwa na ukosefu wa chakula duniani i was looking at a study Nilikuwa nikiangalia na kusoma a brief summary from World Food Organization. Ka kifungo kidogo kutoka kwa shirika kuu la chakula duniani. WFO. WFO. And listen to what they are saying. Sikiza kile wanaosema. But as we think about 2020. Tunapofikiria jua mwaka 2020, an estimated 124 million people. Zaidi ya watu 1000 milioni 124 in 51 countries. Katika mataifa 51 are currently facing crisis of food wanakabiliana na janga la ukosefu wa chakula and they say in 2019 na wanasema mwaka 2019 which is last year mwaka uliopita 108 million people zaidi ya watu milioni moja ma, milioni 108 first issues to do with food security walikabiliana na mambo ya ukosefu wa chakula in 48 countries katika mataifa 48 the problem is increasing shida inaendelea kuongezeka And ladies and gentlemen This is our world today According to UNICEF They say 3.1 million children Watoto milioni 3.1 die from malnutrition every year in the world. Wanakufa kwa sababu ya kukosa kukula lishe nzuri duniani. That is a problem. Hiyo ni shida. And as we think about corona no that I'm down playing it. Na tunapozungumzia juu ya corona sio eti naipuuza. There are other things that are killing people. Bado kuna mambo mengine inayowaua watu. That we need to address. Ambayo lazima tuyazingatie na tuyanene. Global report on food crisis. Katika report ya ulimwengu ya chakula na janga la chakula. They are saying 100 million people have faced food crisis in the last two years. Wanasema kwa zaidi ya watu milioni 100 wamekabiliana na hili janga la jaa kwa miaka miwili iliyopita. 2020 it will not be different haitakuwa tofauti why am i saying this kwani niseme hivi as we talk today tunapozungumza sasa there is the locust invasion kuna sasa kuingiliwa kwa kwa kuingiliwa nanzige nanzige in the following countries katika mataifa haya kenya Kenya, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Somalia, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan ya Kusini, Eritrea, Eritrea, Yemen, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Kuwait, UAE, na Uarabuni, Iran, Iran, and Pakistan. Na Pakistani. This is the current invasion. He he had your mataifa ambayo yamekabiliwa na janga la nzige. And let me tell you, na nikwambie, it has not been arrested. Bado halijatatuliwa. So this is a threat. Kwa hivyo hili ni tishio to food security. Kwa, kwa kwa chakula na ukosefu wa chakula in these countries. Katika mataifa haya. Without even factoring changing weather patterns attributed to global warming. Na hata bila kuangalia hili hali ya mataifa mabadiliko ya anga. Mabadi, hali ya mabadiliko ya anga. Ladies and gentlemen. Wapendwa In the nations that I've mentioned Kenya included. Katika mataifa ambayo nimeyataja Kenya ikiwemo. This is a population of over 300 million people. Hawa ni watu zaidi ya milioni 300. So this year, mwaka huu, it might be worse. Inaweza kuwa ni baya zaidi. Are these the discoveries of men? Na je, haya ni ma Ni watu wamevumbua? Ni ni watu wamevumbua? 
Jesus spoke on these things. Yesu aliazungumzi haya mambo. Number 3 when we look at our world today there is an increase in earthquake and tremors and Jesus said in Luke 21 and verse 11 that there will be great earthquake in various places as we talk today since the year 1900 over 2 million people have died from earthquakes. For us that have been around for a, for a while, in the year 2004, the great tsunami that hit the Indian Ocean baseline and that earthquake affected nations of the world. 200,000 and 27,898 deaths were recorded. The total damage estimates was 15 billion US dollars. People died. People died. You remember Sumatra in Indonesia? Unakumbuka Sumatra kule Indonesia? People died. Watu walikufa. With sophistication of measuring equipment for earthquakes, na katika hali ya kuendelea na zile vifaa za kupima mitetemeko ya ardhi, they are approximating that in the year 2020, wanakisia kwamba mwaka 2020, there will be 20,000 earthquakes and tremors. Kutakuwa na mitetemeko ya ardhi zaidi ya 1,020. 19 are expected to have a big magnitude. Are they prophesying? They are just speaking what Jesus spoke. Jesus again spoke of pestilence. And number four, the world we are living in today, there is the manifestation of pestilences. Magonjwa. Magonjwa. When you read Luke 21 and verse 11, pestilences. What is, a, what is a pestilence? This is a fatal epidemic disease. And one nature of a pestilence, it is infectious. It is a fatal disease that spreads. And as we think of what we are going through in the world today, we are talking of the coronavirus. It is a pestilence. It is infectious. But we know through Christ we overcome us. Some of the diseases that have become stubborn of lately, stubborn and kill us, is like malaria. In 2018, 400,005 people are estimated to have died from malaria. Think of malaria. Think of tuberculosis. TB, TB wa, wa pu, Cholera and cancer. Cholera na zaratani. People are dying. Watu anakufa. World Health Organization say that since 1970 over 40 infectious diseases have been discovered. Let me just open up your mind some few years ago. We had the SARS virus. SARS began in China. And by the time it was being stopped, 8,000 people had been infected in China and Canada. 800 people died. In the forest of Congo, we have the dreaded Ebola disease. This is a bad disease. Few years ago, in the early 80s, 
Miaka ya zamani ya 80. There was an infectious disease. Kulikuwa na ugonjwa wa kuambukizana. Called chikungunya. Uliokuwa unaitwa chikungunya. More recently the avian flu. Na unakaa kama ule ugogo wa avian flu. More recent the avian flu. Kwa hivi karibuni avian flu. Swine flu. Huu ugonjwa wa gurue. Zika. Zika. So we are living in a world today. Tunaishi katika ulimwengu sasa. As we progress with the days, tunapoendelea katika siku, infectious diseases are being discovered. Magonjwa ya kuambukizanwa yanavumbuliwa. These are the last days. Hisi ni siku za mwisho. So even after corona, kwa hivyo hata baada ya corona, another will come. Ingine itatokea. It will get a name. Bado itapata jina. It will scare the hell of heaven or hell in us. Bado itatusumbua akili juu juu na hapa duniani. As I was checking my records, nikiangalia rekodi zangu. The latest infection worldwide of the coronavirus, maambukizi ya corona kwa sasa is 105 people. Watu 1,586,586. Countries that have been affected up to date na nchi ambazo zimeshambuliwa kwa sasa is 101 nations ni mataifa 101 ladies and gentlemen wapendwa when jesus was seated with his disciples yesu alipokuwa amekaa na wanafunzi wake he saw these world events aliona haya matukio ya ulimwengu he saw food shortage in the world akaona ukosefu na upungufu wa chakula duniani he saw earthquakes and tremors akaona mitetemeko ya ardhi he saw the manifestation of pestilences akaona madhihirisho ya magonjwa he saw wars in nations akaona vita vya kimataifa and these are the things that fill our news every day na haya ndio mambo yanazojaza habari zetu za kila siku what about apostle paul Je, habari gani mtume Paulo? As he talked to a young pastor by the name Timothy. Alipokuwa akizungumza na mchungaji mchanga pa Timotheo. He took him. Alimtazama. He took him many years ahead. Akampeleka miaka mingi kule mbele. Our days today. Ya siku zetu sa sasa. And Apostle Paul, na mtume Paulo, did not look at world events. Hakutazama matukio ya ulimwengu. He looked at the behavior of the people of the time. Na aliangalia tabia za watu wa wakati huo. So allow me just to spend a short while. Kwa hivyo nijihuruzi nichukue muda kidogo to look at what is the character of the people in the last days. Na nikwambie itakuwaje tabia ya watu wa siku za mwisho. In 2 Timothy from chapter 3 verse 1 continuing. Katika Timotheo wa pili mlango wa 3 mstari wa kwanza na kuendelea. Paul looks at the character of the people in the last days. Paulo anatazama tabia ya watu wa siku za mwisho. Jesus spoke of the events beyond our control. Na Yesu Kristo akazungumzia juu ya matukio tusio na uwezo wa kuyatawala. But Paul looked at the behavior of the people. Lakini Paulo alitazama tabia za watu. And again I'll just cluster them together because of time. Na nitaziweka pamoja kwa sababu ya wakati. We read, we read the scripture I'll not read it again. Tumesoma andiko na sita isoma tena. But the first cluster that I see. Lakini kifungu cha kwanza ambacho nakiona. That in the last days. Ya kwamba siku za mwisho. Levels of greed. Kutakuwa na viwango vya juu. Viwango vya juu of greed. Ya ya tamaa. And an biblical ways of wealth creation. Na jia sisi zo za kiungu za kutengeneza utajiri. And accumulation of wealth. Na pia kukusanya utajiri. When you look at our times today. Ukitazama nyakati zetu sasasa. When you think money. Ukifikiria pesa. There are high levels of greed. Kuna tamaa ya hali ya juu sana. There are a lot of unbiblical ways of wealth creation and accumulation. Na kuna zoja nyingi sana sisi za kiungu za kutengeneza utajiri. Jesus spoke of people being lovers of themselves. Wa Yesu akazungumzia juu ya watu kujipenda. Covetousness. Watu ambao hawana heshima. Boasters, proud. Watu wenye kuringa. And all these are associated with wealth accumulation. Na hii yote inahusishwa na hali ya kunyakua mali. We are Kenyans. Sisi ni wa Kenya. There was a report given here. Kuna report iliyopeanwa hapa. In the year 2019. Mwaka 2019. And they reported na wakasema that Kenya ya kwamba Kenya is losing a third of its state budget wanapoteza dhurudhi tatu ya bajeti yao which is equivalent to US dollar 6 billion ambayo inatoshana na bilioni 6 dola za marekani to corruption katika ufisadi and let me tell you Kenyans na niwaambie wa Kenya there is a stronger diseases than corona kuna magonjwa inayopita corona corruption 
ufisadi. If such amounts of money katika kifungu kikubwa hicho cha pesa is taken by individuals inachukuliwa na watu binafsi we can never have strong health systems hatuwezi kuwa na huduma bora za kiafya our educational systems will suffer huduma zetu za mazakia za mavaza elimu zitateseka we will never have running water 24/7 hatutakuwa na maji yanayotiririka kwa 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 siku mzima but again when you look at our nation lakini tena tunapotazama taifa letu a lot of billionaires have been created in the last 20 years. Kuna mabilionea wengi ambao wametokea kwa hii miaka 20. And I send you to them. Na ninakutuma kwao. Ask them what business they've done. Hebu waulize ni biashara gani ulifanya? What have they done? Ni kazi gani wamefanya? To get those billions. Wapate hayo mabilioni ya pesa. And so ladies and gentlemen. Kwa hivyo wapendwa. Greed. Tama and biblical ways of wealth creation na jia sisizo za kiungu za kutengeneza utajiri and accumulation of wealth na kunyakuwa urithi na mali nyingi they do, that does not just define kenya hiyo sio tu zinazomtambulisha mkenya it defines the world of today inatambulisha ulimwengu wa sasa people want money at all costs watu wanataka pesa kwa vyo vyote vile and ladies and gentlemen na wapendwa let's not be caught up in the web to see patikane katika huo mtego let's keep our christian identity wacha tuweke kitabulisho chetu cha kikristo as we do business tunapofanya biashara as we look for money tunapotafuta pesa let's do it the bible way tufanye hivyo kwa njia ya kiungu the second thing that describes the society in our time in these last days kitu cha pili kinachouendesha ulimwengu wa siku za mwisho is disobedience and disloyalty to authorities ni kuasi na kutotii mamlaka Jesus talks about people being disobedient to parents and thankful. Yesu anazungumzia Apostle Paul sorry. Mtume Paul anazungumzia juu ya watu wa kutokuwa na shukurani na kutowatii wazazi. You see when we look at us tunapojitazama we hate authority. Tunayachukia mamlaka. We are unwilling to obey. Na hatuko tayari kutii. People will love you. Watu watakupenda. When you enter into an office wakati tunapoingia katika ofisi but they will hate you. When you keep when you stay there lakini watakuchukia unapoendelea kukaa katika hiyo ofisi people don't love authority watu hawapendi kutawaliwa people are unwilling to follow authority watu hawako tayari kuyafuata mamlaka look at even our city hebu tazama hata mji wetu when you put a sign unapoweka kibango usipite hapa don't pass here hakuna njia that is when we realize i need to pass here hapo ndipo unatabuaga kumbe hapa kuna njia because we are disobedient ni kwa sababu sisi ni waasi usikae hapa don't sit here that is when people want to sit there hapo ndipo unapanguza kukaa consider school strikes in our nation hebu tazama migomo ya mashule yetu university strikes and demonstrations migomo ya vyo vikuu the latest being in meru na ya mwisho hivi karibuni ni kule Meru. It was such a comedy my friend. Ilikuwa ni sarakasi rafiki yangu. When students wakati wanafunzi are driving the police car with sirens on. Wanaanza kuendesha gari la polisi wakiweka kingora. And they are chasing policemen. Na wanawafukuza polisi na gari ya polisi. With their car and with sirens. Na gari yao wakiweka kingora disobedience and disloyalty to authorities uasi wa kutotii mamlaka paul looking at the social life of our time paul wakitazama nyakati zetu sa sasa thirdly again i cluster them ya tatu naziweka pamoja violence and brutality to fellow humans uovu na vita violence ukali brutality na vita to fellow humans kwa wanadamu wenzetu he says without natural affection anasema hawana ule upendo wa kiwanadamu do you know that in these times we are living in je unajua nyakati tunazoishi ndani yake there has been an increase in murders kumekuwa na ongezeko la mauaji that are very brutal ambao ni mauaji ya kikatili sometimes we make comedy out of them na wakati mwingine tunatengeneza sarakasi but they are very brutal lakini ni mauaji ya kikatili ya kinyama in september 2019 i'll just i'll not mention them because we know them mwezi wa 9 mwaka 2019 sita ninatatanya tu kwa sababu tuwayajua september 2019 mwezi wa 9 2019 top cohen top cohen 
was found in a septic tank murdered. Alipatikana katika shimo la majitaka. Murdered. Ameuawa. Brutality. Kiunyama kiukatili. If you can remember. Ibapo utakumbuka. February 22. Ah uh, tarehe 22 mwezi wa pili. KTN News 2019. Na uh, habari za KTN News mwaka 2019. They wrote a husband from hell. Wakaandika bwana kutoka jehanamu. There was a lady killed in Kahawa Sukari. Kuna mama aliyeuawa kule Kahawa Sukari. And it was alleged na ilielezewa that this lady was killed by her husband. Ilielezewa kwamba huyu mama aliuawa na mume wake. In the presence of the father-in-law and mother-in-law bao mamake mkwe na babake mkwe wakiona we know these brutalities hu uaji wa kikatili they have been on the increase zimeongezeka between husband and wife kati ya mke na mume father and the entire family or mother and the entire family baba maana wao wa mama na watoto wote jamii yote anaiondoa i don't want to bring in aspects of robbery with violence Sitaki kuleta zile visa za mawizi na mauaji ya kibabavu. Kimabafu. There has been an increase in violence and brutality. Kumekuwa na hali ya ukatili mwingi na kiwavizi wa kimabavu ambao umeongezeka. People don't care about life. Watu hawajali maisha. The sanctity of life is disappearing. Ile hali ya kuheshimu uzima na afya na na maisha haipo tena. The Daily Nation September 21st 2018 reported Gazeti la Nation September 21 mwaka 2008 likaandika that 2600 women die from unsafe abortions every year. Ya kwamba wanawake 2600 hufa kila mwaka wakijaribu kuafya mimba. And when you look at that, na unapotazama hiyo, maybe the media would want to project the death of the women. Unaona media inataka tu wana habari wanataka tu kuletea fifo vya wamama but i'm also looking at brutality the lack of value for life lakini pia naangalia ukatili wa kutoheshimu maisha whether born or unborn hata kama hajazaliwa ama amezaliwa there is violence kuna ukatili there is brutality kuna vita when you look at the world statistics unapotazama uh, udadisi wa ulimwengu wa sasa unborn babies watoto bao hajazaliwa have been killed in millions wameuawa kwa mamilioni who cares nani anajali number 4 on the social life ya nne katika maisha paul says paul anasema there will be increase in unnatural sexual affections kutakuwa na ongezeko la ngono isiyo ya kawaida our world today ulimwengu wetu wa sasa is fighting so that the church can recognize same sexual unions una ulimwengu wa sasa unapigana ili makanisa yetu ya sasa yakubaliane na zile ngono za kike kwa kike ama kiume kwa kiume there has been an increase in what we call the gblt agenda worldwide na kumekuwa na ongezeko la mzizimuko wa gblt kwa ulimwengu wote and you see the next frontier of moral war in the world today na unajua vita vinavyofuatia vya ulimwengu wa sasa will not be fought because of guns hasita piganwa kwa sababu ya mabuduki it will be fought on moral stance itakuwa vita vitakavyoshindanwa kwa sababu ya tabia nzuri na msimamo wa tabia njema what is your stand on moral issues je msimamo wako ni upi kwa mambo yanayohusiana na mambo ya ya kinyume na na tabia nzuri. Do you support lesbianism? Je, wewe unaunga mkono hali ya ushoga? Do you support gayism? Una support una unaunga mkono ushoga? Do you support bisexuals? Una unaunga mkono hiyo hali ya moja wake kwa wake ama wake waume kwa waume. What is your take on transgender matters? Wewe msimamo wako ni upi katika What? transgender? Usanyaji There are people who say Kuna watu wanaosema I don't want to be a man anymore I want to be a lady. Oh, mimi sitaki kuwa mwanamume tena nataka kuwa msichana. And they go through surgical processes to be made ladies. Na wanapitia hali ya upasuaji na wanafanywa wamama. They are put in they give them hormones and they start having whatever. Wanawekwa homono za kike na wanataka kuwa hivyo. That is the next frontier of war. Hiyo ndio vita iliyo sasa. And let me tell you. The church must have a stand. 
kanisa lazima liwe na msimamo. And that is why Jesus said, persecutions will come. Mateso yatakuwepo. If you don't agree, you will not be loved. Kama hautakubaliana, hautapendwa. If you agree, you will be loved. Na kama utakubaliana na haya, utapendeka. And my dear Kenyans, na wa Kenya wenzangu, the GBLT movement is gaining ground in our nation. Na GBLT movement hii la washoga lime paga limepata mizizi Kenya. They even have a church. Hata wana kanisa lao. There is increase kuna ongezeko in a natural sexual affections in the world. Katika kuvutiwa kwa kigono isiyo ya kawaida ulimwenguni. I remember one time I was at Heathrow Airport London. Anakumbuka wakati mmoja katika akiwa katika uwanja wa ndege wa Heathrow kule London. And two men were seated next to me both with beards. Na wanaume wawili walikuwa wamekaa kando yangu wote na kidevu. And they were talking na wanazungumza and then it was their time to say bye bye to each other na wakati wakiabiana bye bye i was shocked i was almost fainting in a foreign land na alishangaa karibu kuzimia katika nchi ya wenyewe these men grabbed each other hawa wanaume walikumbatiana they began kissing wakaanza kupeana mbusu i don't know if kitonga can translate this in swahili <laughs> snogging na hiyo snogging sijui ni gani kwa Kiswahili. I was shocked. Na nikashangaa. I thought I was dreaming. Nikafikiria nimelala naota. And I realized this is a world today. Na nikajua huu ndio ulimwengu wetu wa sasa. Increase in unnatural sexual affections. Kuongezeka kwa kuvutiwa kwa kingono kwa ile jinsia nyingine. Number 5. Ya tano. Lovers of pleasure wa watu wanaopenda nasa rather than lovers of God. Kuliko wapenda Mungu. Ladies and gentlemen, we may not meet in the church building. We may not meet in the church building. But we still have joy. We can sing and jump in our houses. But think about football lovers. Lakini we, fikiria jua wale wapenzi wa kadada. If football stadiums are shut as they are shut today. Kama uwanja za mpira zitafungwa vile ambavyo zimefungwa sasa. They cannot sing, they cannot jump. Hawawezi imba, hawawezi ruka. We are living in a world. Tunaishi katika ulimwengu where people love entertainment mahali watu wanao watu wa kupenda kutumbuizwa na anasa people love entertainment watu wanapenda anasa look at the comparison tazama kulinganishwa of sports facilities versus church buildings kwa kulinganishwa kwa viwanja vya michezo na makanisa linganisha sports facilities are bigger viwanja vya michezo ni kubwa compare numbers of bars versus number of churches in your estate ukilinganisha linganisha linganisha mabaya yaliyo kwenu estate na makanisa nini ni nyingi compare church attendance hebu linganisha kwenda kanisani vis-a-vis even in your local estate fans watching manchester united versus arsenal na wewe linganisha wakati wa mashabiki wanao tazama either mpira wa arsenal na na manu lovers of pleasure wapenzi wa anasa and you see it's so comical na unajua ni kitu ya kushangaza na ya kufurahisha when you look at the at the at the check pay of the best surgeon unapotazama mshahara who is saving lives mshahara unaolipwa ule daktari wa upasuaji mzuri sana anayeokoa maisha visavi a footballer who is entertaining people ukiliganisha mshahara wa mchezaji mpira na daktari anayeokoa maisha and you wonder what a world today who should be paid more is it an entertainer or a surgeon lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god let me learn this by saying that paul said in the last days Siku za mwisho. People will have an appearance of godliness but without God. Watu wataonekana ni kana wanapenda Mungu lakini hawampendi. Fake religion. Dini fake. When you look at the world today, utazama ulimwengu wa sasa, there is a rise in the number of cults. Kuna inuka madhehebu ya makanisa ya madini za uongo. And cults are boasting more numbers 
than true churches. Just like Paul said, itching ears will follow the wrong thing. There is a rise in false doctrine. Distortion on the, on the teachings on grace. Prosperity, faith and salvation. You must be careful what you believe. Lastly, there is a rise in the worship of men. People do not know when, res when respect for men should end, where, where the respect for men should end. And the worship of God should begin. So these three things signify ungodliness in our time. Arise in the number of cults. Arise in false doctrines. The raise in the worship of men. We worship men more than God. I finish by asking a question. What should we do? Should we be fearful? Should we close ourselves Je, in our houses? In these times and days, the church has a mandate. The church has been positioned for such a time as this. The church is very important at such a time as this. Governments are important. But God is counting on the church. God is counting on you and me. What should I do? In all these things that I've said, people are dying in their masses. In wars, in famine, in sin, people are dying. What should the church do? Jesus said, and this gospel of the king Kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end should come. When Jesus was speaking to the disciples, answering the question of the end times, he told them, it is not what you see. It is what you do. The church, Kanisa, we must preach the gospel. Lazima injili. The wake up call for the church. Wito wa kanisa wa kuamka. Wito wa kanisa wa kuamka. In these last days, siku hizi za mwisho, is to preach the gospel. Nikuhubiri injili. People are dying. Watu wanakufa. Not just of corona. Sio tu juu ya corona. People are dying in wars. Watu wanakufa katika vita. People are dying of hunger. Watu wanakufa juu ya njaa. People are dying because of sins. Watu wanakufa kwa sababu ya dhambi. We must preach the gospel with haste. Death is harvesting people. Today more than yesterday. And our mandate is to preach. There are many voices. As you open your news, it is death all over. We are doomed if we don't preach the gospel. The voice of the gospel should not be put down because of these many voices. This is the time to share the gospel. This is the time to preach faith. Jesus said, when you see these things happening, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. I speak to you right in your home. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Share your faith. This is the time. The hour is urgent. People are dying. 
God is counting on you. I was looking on statistics on death. And they are saying 56 million 600,000 people die every year. That means 4.7 million people die monthly. Every day, 155,000 people die. In every hour, 6,500 people die. In every minute, 107 people die. Every second, two people die. People are dying. You see, it is not about dying. It is about the eternal destiny of people. It is either the devil is harvesting. Or God harvesting. Church, wake up. We must preach the gospel. Secondly, what should we do this time? We should be found in Christ. As a believer, take care of yourself. Like Paul, run the race with certainty, not uncertainty. Discipline your body. Bring it to subjection. So that after you preach to others, you're not disqualified. One of the most powerful scriptures, John chapter 5. Verse 28 and 29. The Bible says, do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Take care of yourself. Watch your faith. And let me speak to you that the greatest fear should not be the fear of corona or death. The greatest fear should be missing heaven. Your greatest fear is what if I miss heaven? What if, what if I miss heaven? As I finish, what should we do? Thirdly and lastly, partner in kingdom matters. Partner in kingdom matters. You see, it is quite clear with all the accumulations that we have, Katika mambo yote tulio nayo. Naked we came. Tulikuja uchi. Naked we live. Tutarudi uchi. We will live with nothing. Hatuta toka hapa na chochote. Somebody said when you think about death. Mutu wakasema kwa ba unapo fikiria juu ya kifo. It should change your perspective. Inafaku ubalisha mtazamo wako. About your participation in the work of God. And somebody said. Mutu wakasema. Very soon death is coming. Very soon death is coming. It is coming. It will find you where you are. Be it in the car. Be it in the hospital. Be it in your home. Be it in the air. Be it in the sea. Be it in the fire. Be it a snake bite. Death will find you out. Kifo kita kupata mahali. But think about it. Lakini we fikiria. When your when your soul and spirit is departing from your physical body. Wakati roho ina pondo kaka tika muili hu. And you are up in the air. Na ukokule angani. You can and you look at your car. 
na utazame gari lako you will never drive it again hautaiendesha tena you look at your mansion that you struggle to build unatazama nyumba yako nzuri kubwa ambayo umengangana kujenga you will never sleep in it again haulali hapo tena You look at the houses you built. Unatazama majumba ambao umeyajenga. You will never collect that rent again. Hiyo kodi hauipati tena. You look at your farm. Unatazama shamba lako. You will not even harvest the maize that is ready. Hata hautavuna mahindi aliyokuwa tayari. You look at your bank account. Unatazama ngombe zako. You, you look at your bank account. Unatazama pesa zako katika account. It is reading millions. Inataza inasoma mamilioni. You cannot write a check. Hauwezi andika hudi. You cannot command anybody. Hauwezi amuru yeyote. You've left everything. Umeacha kila kitu. The big question is, swali kubwa ni Will you be glad with what you've done with what God has given you? Je, utakuwa utafurahia kwa kile ulichofanya na alichokupa Mungu? And I urge you. Ninakusihi partner with the kingdom of God. Husika na kazi ya Mungu. Others will be glad and sing. Watu watafurahia na kusema. As I go, ninapoenda. Those that are preaching there wanaohubiri pale it is because i gave ni kwa sababu nilitoa those that got saved wale wanaookoka is because i gave ni kwa sababu nilitoa i've been active with my resources in god's work nimekuwa mwaminifu kwa kazi ya mungu others will say wengine watasema the car the preacher is driving ile gari mhubiri anaendesha he is preaching everywhere anahubiri kila mahali i am glad i gave ninashukuru nina nilitoa i am gone nimeenda But my resources is still winning souls for the kingdom. Lakini bado rasilimali zangu zinavua nafsi kwa ajili ya ufalme. Our mandate is clear. Kazi yetu ni wazi. We must partner with God's kingdom. Lazima tuhusike na kazi ya Mungu. As I close, nikimalizia. These are the last days. Hizi ni siku za mwisho. We should redeem time because the days are evil. Lazima tuukomboe wakati kwa sababu ni nyakati za uovu. Our eyes should be open to understand the Bible from a prophetic age. Macho yetu lazima yawe wazi kuelewa Biblia kutoka kwa mlengo wa kiunabii. Our our walk with God should be ordered by God's work. Word. Na, na kutembea kwetu na Mungu lazima kuwa murisho na kazi ya Mungu. And as a believer kama muaminio we must understand our role in these last days lazima tuelewe sehemu yetu siku hizi za mwisho do not let fear grip you usiwache uoga ukukamate ukunase understand why you're here elewa sababu yako ya kuwa hapa god is in control of everything Mungu, happening mungu anatawala kila kitu kinachofanyika because he wants you and i kwa sababu anataka wewe pamoja nami to accomplish kingdom business tumalize kazi ya ufalme right from your home kutoka kwa nyumba yako I speak to you. Ninakuzungumzia. God needs your hand in his work. Mungu anahitaji mkono wako kwa kazi yake. Be found preaching the gospel. Upatikane katika injili. Be found walking in Christ. Upatikane ukitembea katika Kristo. Be found as a partner of the kingdom. Na upatikane kama mhusika wa ufalme. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Before we before you exit. Kabla ya kutoweka. We'll give you some of our announcements. Tutakupatia baadhi ya matangazo yetu. And I believe the Lord will bless you as you respond. Na ninaamini Mungu atakubariki unapoitikia mwito wa matangazo hayo. We want to declare that our altar is open to prayer. Na tunataka kutangaza kwamba madhabahu yetu yako wazi kwa maombi. We may not do structured services. Tunaweza kosa kufanya ibada kama ilivyo desturi. But you can come and pray. Lakini unaweza kuja na kuomba. You can come to the church and give. Unaweza kuja kanisani na pia utoe sadaka yako. You can come to the church and read the Bible. Unaweza kuja kanisani na pia usome Biblia. You can come to the church and see the pastor. Unaweza kuja kanisani na kumuona mchungaji. And I believe the Lord will bless you. Na naamini kwamba Mungu atakubariki. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Mungu awabariki. Amen. Amen. So before we exit, kabla ya kwenda, the worship team will give us a number. Oh, sitabaki kama nilivyo. Sitabaki kama nilivyo. Sitabaki Oh uh-huh.
Wakati wangu 